Hey guys, welcome to Kanni's classes, Concepts Simplified just for you. This is UGC NET Home Science series. In this series, we'll discuss the topics in Home Science syllabus one by one. And today, let's see about textiles, which is the third unit in the NET Home Science syllabus. In this video, let's discuss about what is textiles, that is a small introduction about textiles and the topic covered in this unit. And also let's understand the basic terminologies in textiles. I'm pretty sure that understanding these terminologies will help you to understand the concept in a better way. And at the end, if you find this video useful, then don't forget to like, share and comment and also subscribe to Kanni's classes so that you will be notified whenever I post a video. Come, let's move on to the topic. First, textiles. What is textiles? Textiles collectively refer to the fabric that we use to make garments or dress. That is a fabric. It is not stitched. lengthy fabric in meters. That is fabric. And how we get this fabric? We get this fabric by the process of weaving, knitting, braiding, etc. What these processes are? These processes are there we, where we take yarn or thread. Thread we call it as yarn. We take these threads and we interlace them or interlock them. That is a process you can see while they weave the cloth in hand loom and all. So with that we get a net like structure and that is that gives the fabric. And how we get this yarn? We get this yarn from the fiber. What these fiber are? They are the thin filaments and they will be either occurring naturally or they can be man-made. If you see natural fiber, you have cotton, silk, jute, etc. We get cotton from plant, which is a natural source. You get silk from silkworm, which is a natural source. Whereas there are some man-made fibers also like uh, nylon, polyester, all these things, it is man-made. It is a like they are synthetic fibers. So in any way, these fiber are twisted together and that process is called spinning. We do that and we get yarn and the yarn is subjected to weaving, knitting and braiding process and where we will get the fabric. So textiles is the study of the journey of your cloth from fiber to fabric. And also in addition to that, you will study in textiles about the types of fiber, the types of yarn, the process in how the fiber is made into yarn and the process, what is weaving, what is knitting, what is braiding, all these things you will study. And apart from that, you will also study about dyeing and printing. Like you get the color in the garment, how you get the fiber or the yarn are dyed, that is they add color and also you have prints on your fabric is it not what are the different kind of designs you get on your fabric so different kind of prints also we will study and also we will study about the finishing process before it come to the consumer the cloth is subjected to some kind of process so that it will be so good to look and it can be easily marketed so that process we call it as finishing so textiles is study of all this I hope you have got a good understanding about what you will study in this unit. Now, we will see the important topics in textiles unit. First is textile terminologies, which we are going to see now and the properties of fiber, the types of fiber, the types of yarns and weaves, all these we will study and the manufacturing process of major natural and man-made fibers selective natural fibers like cotton, wool and silk, we will see the manufacturing process of those and some man-made fibers also. Then next is method of fabric construction. In this we will study about the type of weaving and the different type of knitting and all that and textile finishes. So any fabric soon after the weaving process cannot be marketed. They are subjected to some kind of finish so that they make that fabric ready for the marketing and for the consumer use. The next is dyeing and printing where the fiber or the yarn or the fabric itself is dyed 
and some kind of designs are added to the fabric all these come under dyeing and printing and traditional textiles of india see india is a country where we have different cultures and each and every region will be famous for a type of uh, fabric or dress materials like uh, we have uh, different kind of embroidery like kanta embroidery chicken curry embroidery and uh, batik printing tie and dye materials and different type of weaves also we have all these come under the traditional textiles of india next comes textile testing and quality control see any product if it comes to the market it will be subjected to test and quality check and even textiles any fabric will come under quality check and textile testing will be done and next is eco friendly textiles where we will study about textiles which are friendly to the environment like uh, if it is a jute fabric it is a eco friendly fabric because after we decompose also it will not do any harm to the environment we will also study about the band dyes dyes which are not eco friendly which should not be used in textiles and the last one is the recent developments in textiles and apparels we will study about nano textiles zero waste designing upcycling and recycling nano textile is the recent uh, field which is emerging in textile industry we will study all these in detail when we uh, study about the topic so these are all the important topics in textiles next comes textile terminologies i have explained and we have understood almost 6 to 7 terms so far and i don't think we need to explain those terms again so we can rush up with those terms and i will stop and explain whenever a new term comes first is textiles as we have seen it is nothing but the fabric and it is a flexible material made by creating an interlocking bundle of yarns or threads and how these yarns were made they were made by spinning raw fibers into long and twisted length next is fiber fiber is the basic unit of textiles and fiber can be defined as a thin fine hair like substance you can see it in the picture it can either be natural or man made and it should have a high length to width ratio that is it should be lengthy and it will have very less width means it will be very thin and it should be fit enough to being processed into a fabric if it is not able to made into a fabric then it is not considered as a textile fiber next is yarn it is a continuous strand of thread made of natural or synthetic fiber and it is used for making a fabric by processes like weaving knitting etc and fabric this also we have seen the definition for fabric will be almost similar to that of textiles a fabric is produced from a yarn by performing mechanical operations as interlacing or interloping or intermeshing process that is taking the yarn one into the other and at this stage the fabric is referred as gray cloth means soon after weaving before taking the fabric to the finishing process the fabric is called gray cloth spinning spinning is twisting together of drawn out strands of fibers to form yarn weaving it is a simple method of producing net like structures using yarns that is stable and durable one thing we have to keep in mind is that while making a fabric the yarn should be stable and durable It means it should be strong enough for air to undergo the weaving process if it breaks down in between then it the fabric cannot be made and in this process two sets of yarns were used one will go in longitudinal way the other will be running horizontally and these yarns were interlaced with each other you can see it goes up of one thread and it goes down then it go up and it come down so in this way they were done and a net like structure is made and these two set of yarn they have names which run in longitudinal way it is called warp yarn and which run horizontally it is called weft yarns that is what we are seeing here warp and weft yarns the lengthwise or longitudinal running of yarn in a loom is called warp yarn and the yarn that run horizontally in a loom is called weft yarns 
Now, what is a loom? A loom is a frame or machine you can see in the picture. It is used to interlace the warp and weft yarns at the right angles. Okay. You can see a hand loom. You can imagine a hand loom. You could have seen anywhere in any picture. Next is dyeing. Dyeing is nothing but adding color. So, dyeing is a coloration of textile substrates and we can add color in any stage, either in fiber stage, yarn stage or in fabric stage for the purpose of improving its, its aesthetic features, features means that to make, to add beauty to that fabric, we are adding color. It is a chemical process of applying color to the textile substrates like fiber, yarn or fabric or garment by using natural or synthetic dyes. Next is printing. Printing is a chemical process of applying design. Again, this is also to improve the beauty of the fabric. We apply the designs and many techniques were used in printing. There are many types of printing. We can see all those later. Now comes finishing. It is the final stage of chemical or combination of mechanical and chemical process to make the fabric ready for particular intended end use. End use is, is that? For the consumer use. Thus, the fabric is referred as a finished fabric ready for making the apparel and home furnishing and industrial products. Next comes color fastness. Color fastness is the ability of the fabric to retain the color in it. When we wash it, during when we sun dry it, the fabric should be able to retain its color. That refers to the color fastness. To resist the color losing or reducing from the textile material during different mechanical, physical and chemical treatment is called color fastness. Simple and novelty yarns. Simple yarns are even in size and have equal number of turns or twist per inch. As we know the fiber is twisted together to form the yarns. If the twist is equal in equal distance, then it is called simple yarns. Whereas novelty yarns are otherwise called speciality or complex yarns. You can consider them as a fancy yarns to add beauty to the product. This type of yarns are used. And if you see in novelty yarn, there will be three basic parts. You can see in the picture a ground or foundation or a core yarn, which will held these fancy yarns in position they are like the bone they will hold the yarn in position and there will be other yarn it is called fancy or effect yarn that will add beauty to the yarn and the last one is the binder yarn which will make the fancy yarn to held in position so the novelty yarns are usually to add beauty to the product these kind of yarns were used Next is GSM of fabrics. GSM is known as grams per square meter. So it refers to the weight of the fabric. For example, if you uh, see a net like structure uh, where uh, netted material, you can see the GSM will be very less. Whereas for uh, jean material, the GSM will be very high. If the last one is nano textiles. Nano textiles is a new emerging field in textile industry and uh, the word nano means very small. You can see micro is small, nano is so very small than micro ones. For example, you can say nanoparticle will be 1 million times smaller than a sand particle. Means it is only microscopic in nature. So what they do in the textiles is that they take the five structure of fiber and they go up to the nano uh, level size and they make changes in the, those fibers and they bring the difference in the fabric. So the fabric is produced by applying that nanotechnology, taking the seeing the fiber till the nano size stage and making changes or doing process in that stage and making bring a new type of material that we deal with the nano textiles either they can be done in fiber stage 
or sometimes what they do is that after making that fabric they ap apply some kind of nano uh, technology work on the fabric and they increase the look or the appearance of the fabric and these are all the basic terminologies that i want to share with you and there are lots and lots of terminologies in textiles we can learn and understand all those terms then and there we come across those terms in the video let's discuss about fiber the properties of fiber classification of fiber fiber can be classified into natural and man made we can see all those things in next video and that's all for this video friends i hope this video is useful to you if so do like share and comment also subscribe to kani's classes and press the bell icon nearby so that you will get a notification whenever i post a video see you all in next video bye for now thank you